praise God. And there shall be mockers. Uh, what does the church need to do to, to take God serious? Pose the question. What does the church need to do? Or what does the church need to be for the world to take God serious? And that is lay his glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory, that we would walk and be an example of his glory. And as we look at the Ark of the Covenant and how terrible they were to carry that Ark on their shoulders, they were afraid of the Ark after after it killed Uzzah because they were not handling the ark properly. They were doing it according to man's ways, not God's ways. And because of that, when the ox cart stumbled, he he tried to grab it and he died. And it said in the word that David was afraid of the Lord on that day, on that day, and he didn't want the Ark of the Covenant in his house. But he put the ark in Obed-Edom's house. And once it was there, it started blooming. It started blossoming. It started bringing um, blessing to his house. And God wants us to be able to walk and walk worthy of our calling and walk in this world with his glory and that we would be changed into his image, that Christ will be formed in us, that we would be changed into his image as we behold his glory, even as Moses behold his glory on the hill. And he asked, show me your glory, O God, show me your glory. This is what it's going to take for the world to take us serious. It says, and there shall be mockers in the last days. We're going to see mocking of the, of the of the church more than ever. We're going to see mocking of the Christ, Jesus Christ, more than ever, more than we've ever seen in our lifetime. And it's going to bring shame on the body of Christ. People are going to be, feel the shame, you know, and, but we are going to have to stand strong. We are going to have to have the power of God with us. We are going to have to carry the anointing with us the Holy Spirit with us when we leave the house, when we speak to people, when we answer them, when they say, ask, uh, what is our hope, what is our hope, you know, to be always ready with that answer. We have to carry God with us. And that's why in another message that I have, men of God who preach against power will have no answer. Men of God who preach against power will have no answers. And that is because when the assault rises against the church and confusion sets in, and there is no anointing, there is no power, there is no standard, nothing that shows that God is with us, they will fall, they will crumble, they will not know what to do. They will be a false minister. They will be someone that has a form of godliness, but denies the power thereof. And what does the scripture say? From them turn away. From such turn away. Men of God who preach against power are in trouble. They're in trouble. Because what is what did, why was the Holy Spirit given in the first place? Why on the day of Pentecost did Jesus say, tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power? And first go to Judea and then all parts of the world, the uttermost parts of the world with the gospel. He did not send them out without power. He did not send them out without an evidence of the Holy Spirit with them. They 
had to have the Holy Spirit with them, with evidence. Signs, wonders, miracles, things with them, things displaying that God is truly among us. God is truly among us. Even as it says about desire to prophesy, desire to prophesy, not just to speak in tongues. Because if you prophesy or you have an interpretation of tongues, it says the the unbeliever will come in your presence and fall at his feet and say the, it, the, the secrets of his heart are exposed and he will fall at the at the at the altar, he will fall at the altar and say, God is truly among you. God is truly among you. The scripture says in Romans chapter one verse sixteen, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and and also for the Greek. For in it is the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Then it says in chapter 1, verse 4, or it's starting with 3, concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection of the dead. Through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. And so he was declared to be the Son of God with power, And it says the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. So in this last day, as we walk amongst the mockers, the scoffers, those preaching with seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, we have to be able to stand unashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. So once again, preaching against power is a problem. Preaching against power is preaching against the Bible. It says they will have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. From such turn away. Do you think in these last days, if Apostle Paul was walking the earth, do you think he would be walking around without power? He went and he had the shipwreck. He had the the, the viper attach himself to his arm and take a, try to take a bite. But he shook it off into the fire. They were waiting for him to die. And then when he didn't die, they were going to worship him as a god because he didn't die. If he hadn't had the, the Holy Spirit with him, and he wasn't called, he wasn't called, he didn't, you know, he didn't have the presence of God with him, he probably would have died. It wasn't his day to die. But he he was showing, there was, there was the marks of the apostle there. There was the fact that he had a sign or a wonder. The wonder was, he wasn't, he didn't die when the viper attached himself. That was the wonder. So there needs to be that in this last day. There needs to be evidence, evidence around us that we're leaving our homes with God. That we're taking, we are taking God serious. We are going, going according to his, 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 his standard. We are not managing the Ark of the Covenant um, presumptuously or carelessly. We're studying to show ourselves approved unto God, not unto man, but unto God. We're spending time with the Lord. 
we're careful, we're walking in holiness, we're walking with sober and vigilant in this last day. It says walk soberly and vigilantly because your adversary, the devil, seeks to see whom he can devour. He walks the, the earth seeking whom he may devour. And so we have to watch and pray. We have to walk with the fruits of the Spirit. We have to walk with the awareness of what's going to be happening in these last days as things go, as things get worse and worse. We need to to be prepared for what our eyes are going to see so that we're not in shock. We're not in awe and wonder. They need to be the ones in awe and wonder and stop mocking God, not us being in awe and wonder because of what they're doing. We need to be the sign and wonder. We need to have that with us. We need to say, Holy Spirit, be with me today. Allow me to be a sign or wonder that they may meet with your glory today, that I may display your glory today. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Lord, as I behold your glory, become Allow your glory in me to be displayed in the earth that they may see you and become transformed by you. That they may see you and become transformed by you. Oh, God, transform us so that we can be a vehicle. We can be that offering poured out to our generation that they will be converted, that they would repent and become converted through the gospel of Christ, which is the power of God unto salvation, the power of God because of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. His death, his burial, and his resurrection from the dead. Lord, we give you glory and honor and praise today. The glory is yours. The glory is yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to your name. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May you get the glory from us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for pouring out your spirit on all flesh in these last days. Your sons and daughters. I glorify you and praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.